So the exchanges are incentivized to help big clients in the expense of the retail investors. Because they are for profit, they're incentivized, and because of the way the markets work the way they work, they have to meet quarterly earnings and so on and so forth. It's not a long-term view they're taking, it's a sh very short-term view they're taking, that they are constantly subjected to the temptation of taking money from one faction of their clientele at the, to, 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 to put the other faction a, 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 in a bad place. This is what Michael Lewis mentioned, and he pointed out that Exchanges are only focusing on the short-term profits and the short-term profitability. They're not focusing on the long run. Meaning, if somebody is showing up to buy a million shares from the exchange, of course, they're going to focus on him instead of you buying 100 shares. And the host from Bloomberg made a very, very good point. Prior to the whole modernization of the stock market, all the rating agencies were known for profit. So, essentially, they were giving the actual, real, natural ratings for the particular stock securities or future business profitability and now we're seeing that all for profit businesses are focusing on their business interests which makes so much sense but if that's the case and if michael lewis is correct why anyone will be wanting to do business with an exchange which exchange will always put in favorable trades and pricing for the big players and are the exchanges sort of the you know like how the rating age what the rating agencies were in the big short is that what the exchanges are here and if they Similar weren't for sort of profit role. if they weren't for profit right. would they be a better force a force we could trust more it's a similar sort of role I, it's a, it, that analogy is probably it's a, but yes that it, it occurred to me that that's actually sort of the role that they are they're thought to be their role it's a kind of utility role you need them to be an honest broker you need them to create a, a fair experience for a customer who walks onto them and if they because they are for profit they're incentivized and because of the way the markets work the way they work they have to meet quarterly earnings and so on and so forth it's not a long-term view they're taking it's a sh very short-term view they're taking that they are constantly subjected to the temptation of taking money from one faction of their clientele at the to 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 put the other faction a, a, in a bad place. Would we like these HFTs more if they actually were putting money at risk, if they had positions? Yes. The fact that they are just taking yes. a scrape here, is yes. that why we dislike them so much? The fact that they, they're sort of set up not to take market risk. They're, you know, it's funny. I want you to have skin in the game. If you have skin in the game and you could lose, you, I like you If more. you could have, you know, 4,000 trading days without a single day's loss, something's a little weird, right? Which also is kind of crazy because if you think Almost every individual investor is crying over that his orders are not executed on the exchanges. They're executed on the wholesalers or market makers placing orders elsewhere. And now when essentially, let's just presume that Gary Gensley did some reform and you get at least 50 to 60% of your orders executed on the exchange, you end up on the exchange, you're happy that your order finally is hitting the New York Stock Exchange or whatever exchange it is, and then you found out from Michael Lewis that you might not actually get the best deal. You might not actually get the best service. You might not actually be the most important person out there, even though customer is always right and should be first. And we already saw how market makers could delay your order if they want to. So the idea over here is that you cannot trust the public entity. You cannot trust the private entity. You cannot trust the lead markets. Who you can actually trust? Of course, everyone is for profit. Is this means that people who can afford to sustain good for-profit relationship with these very important entities will always get the best deals. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the brokers are also part of the game. Remember how Robin Hood removed the buy button? It's like uh, in every stage of you placing, buying or selling orders, you still have to deal with all these different entities. Just think about it. You're going to use the UI interface, which is the actual broker app, which then you have to use the clearing house, which is not up, which is a third party company. Then you have to settle with the actual place you're getting the shares for or selling from. Think about it. This is could be a wholesaler, could be a lead market. And essentially all this process, you have multiple different counterparties that have to work perfectly. And if some of them don't, then you have major issue. You cannot buy or sell. You cannot exit. You cannot fulfill your order completely or partially. And according to someone from Wall Street with uh, extreme experience and success writing about a topic as Michael Lewis, 
they're incentivized to help the big players. They don't really care about you. And he mentioned that the main reason why even Wall Street hates high frequency traders is that they're not losing. Uh, how you can get 4,000, 5,000 trades, for example, without a single loss. So essentially, they might trade the same stocks like me and you. They might buy and sell at the similar prices, but they set the structure of the trade in a way in which they simply cannot lose. They hedge their bets. They have faster execution process in place. And sure, they have someone like Michael Lewis mentioned from the exchange, from the broker, from the clearhouse that is in favor to help them to execute on the profit side simply because they're going to get kicked back. So it's not just the battle between Wall Street versus Main Street. There is an inside battle between Wall Street and Wall Street. There is a computers versus humans. Battle between the family offices and the big hedge funds. The battle between investment banking, retirement funds, asset managers. Like everyone is trying to fight for the same amount of information. The question is who is going to get this first call? This is what they call it on Wall Street. The first call. Who is going to get the first call is the one who is going to make the most money. I'm not sure you if you've watched the documentaries about Wall Street. So now you're probably thinking, who is gonna get the first call during the squeeze? And you probably wonder who get the first call when the situation happened with GameStop, when GameStop was over 400 hours a share. The long investors in GameStop or the short investors in GameStop. The Robin Hood who was actually executing the orders or the clearinghouse or the DTCC or Gary Gensler or Vlad. You see, so many different counterparties they all fighting around the same piece of information. And this piece of information is essentially what people are trading. A lot of people thinking that on Wall Street, people trade stocks or securities. They trade information. Yeah.